you wouldn't be here if we weren't absolutely convinced that you did this to these young ladies. Give me an explanation. I have no explanation to do, give you for something I didn't do. So you're just saying you just got to run a bad luck? No, I'm not saying I had to run a bad nothing. I don't know these people. That you're connected to them? Look at them. They're all staring at you, pointing their fingers. Well, if they could point their fingers, they're looking right at you. There's my cards. There's my deck right there. Yeah. I think my hand's a lot better than yours right now, Lonnie. <clears throat> Your bluff ain't cutting it. You a poker player? No, I'm a poker player. Good, because uh, I wouldn't be gambling with this either if I were you. Mr. Franklin, you have a major problem today. That's what I see. July 7th, 2010. 25 years ago. You, you, you've had this problem for at least that we're aware of for 25 years. You creep out, you pick up these young ladies uh, that are out working Western or Figaro or whatever in the middle of the night. You have sex with them, you kill them, and then you dump their bodies in alleys throughout the city of Los Angeles. Most of them near, not too far from your house. There, there are you see the, the number of faces here. That's how many families are affected by this. Families that have been suffering with this for 25 years. Parents. You're a parent. You've got young, young children, or not young children, but you've got children. What do you think it would feel like to have your little girl murdered, dumped in an alley, and, and not know how that how that came to be for 25 years but somebody somebody left their dna uh signature like their thumbprint on my little girl 25 years over a, a, a number of these for 25 years all the way up until recently just a couple of years ago that person continues to leave their dna thumbprint on all these young ladies who had had uh, a life, had families. They may have been out working, they may have had some drug problems, whatever, but they still have loved ones. And that's your little girl. That's your little girl out there and some some guy that's got a that's got a problem, he keeps picking them up, having his way with them, killing them, dumping them in alleys like they're trash. But he's leaving his mark. He's leaving his... It's like a dog pissing on a fire hydrant. That's you. You're leaving your mark every single time you do this. Well, now, the science has caught up with you. Mr. Franklin, your signature is on every one of these young ladies. There's no denying that. There's no getting out of it. You need, you need to man up and start talking to us why, what in God's name caused this to happen, caused Mr. Lonnie Franklin, when he's not working on a car, when he's not with his wife and children, when he's not driving the trash truck or fixing a police car in a, in a garage somewhere, why he's out creeping at night and, and he, he can't control himself or he just, just whatever, but how did this happen? These families, just like you would want to know if something happened. Well, we'll talk about that in a <laughs> second. But this, we, we know an awful lot about you, probably much, much more than you realize, especially since the comment you just made that you don't creep at night. Oh, I have a place where I go. I have a girlfriend. Well, and where is that? I guess you know, Buckingham. Okay. Mm -hmm. Around Palmyra. Mm-hmm. 
We, we also know, know that you cruise Western Avenue looking for whores every night. Every night, okay. Or not every night. Not every night. You were Saturday You were out there last night. The cops shine their light at you and you skedaddled on home. You were out there a couple of nights ago, Saturday night. Oh, I was on. Oh, I saw the cop when he shined his light on me. Uh-huh. I was on Forty. Uh-huh. I was right on Forty Eighth and Forty uh, Eighth and Western. Okay. Forty right. Eighth and Western, because I pulled over to use my. If he didn't notice, I was using my cell phone. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, Lonnie, what was it Saturday? What was it Saturday? Saturday. Out there, Forty First and Western. Forty First and Western. I was with a friend that night. I was with a friend that night. His girlfriend. His girlfriend. Uh, that was uh, okay. Let, let me let me stop you right there because I don't want to hear your bullshit. Okay, no I'm not going to waste no my problem. time in here listening to I'm bullshit about us. I know I'm talk on the phone and this, that, and this. And how are we going to? How are you going to explain away your one and only on Earth DNA attached to all these young ladies over a 25 year period? I can't explain. it. You seen the billboards up on uh, Western Avenue with the reward and all the faces? Oh, these faces. Right here. Uh, oh, you've seen the billboard where there's one right at 91st and Western. Haven't you haven't it. seen the news over the last several years? It. You know what the news calls you? You tell me what the news calls you. I know damn well you know. I mean, you watch the news at night. You watch TV I on occasion. I talk about some guy on the news. But what do they call him? What was it? The uh, Reaper? The what? The Reaper? Grand Reaper? Something like that. The Grim Sleeper. Oh, okay. I know it's something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, saw it on, I saw it on TV. I look at TV. Well, of course you do. Yeah, I got TV in every room. Well, I don't there you go. All right. Yeah, it is. And I'm so, sure and here we are, sitting things. here. Paul and Dennis are sitting here having a chat with the Grim Sleeper. And that is Mr. Lonnie David Franklin Jr. It's not me, my man. Sorry, it's not me. Okay, then you tell me. You tell me how all of your DNA got on every one of these gals. I have no way. I I, I have not a clue. Well, I I, I know. I have been with these girls. I don't know how how my DNA got there. Well, you're laughing. This was not a funny. No, it's not. Well, when you tell me something like that, you know it's. You know, I wasn't with them. Okay, well then, how did how did your how did your DNA juice get on these bodies? I I don't know. Well, I mean, you 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 watched all these shows. I'm sure you watch all these crime things and about how the modern technologies and the DNAs and I mean, how, how does how does it happen? I mean, it's not like he said. It's not just something we didn't pick your name out of a hat. We did not pick your name out of a hat. Just like he says, your signature, your little DNA, all your little markers comes back to all these women that are staring at you right now. And every one of them has a family, just like you or got a wife and children, and they, they deserve an answer as to what happened to their little, why, why did this happen to the little, little girls? And, uh, and I, I, I got to agree with them. I, I've met with the families many, many times over several years. And uh, some of these people have lived with uh, the unknown for 25 years. And, uh, and I think you deserve, uh, they deserve an answer from you. I mean, you're not going to wiggle out of this. There is no way in hell that this is going to, you're going to wiggle out of this. Your, your DNA signature is on every one of these daughters here. And, and, and you're going to sit here and say, I don't know, I don't know, and uh, last night I pulled over to talk on the cell phone. I mean, come on. Lonnie. I know what I did because me and my girl, I just left my girl's house, and we were, we were talking, and that's when she called me. I already got one ticket for talking on the cell phone, so I pulled over, uh-huh. and, uh, and I was talking to her. You well, just happened so, to pull over by a work whether you, whether you did or not is that's really the, pretty. Yeah. That, that's the minor I, thing, Lonnie. I saw the I saw a girl okay. out there, Lonnie, Lonnie. Lonnie. You can ask her. Did I say anything to her? Uh, no, Lonnie. That, Lonnie. Okay. You think that's that, an that, issue right that now. Is, that is the minor mm-hmm. thing. You have much bigger problems mm-hmm. than whether or not you were going to get a ticket for talking on a cell phone in the car. This is your problem. 
-hmm. And I guarantee you, Lonnie, we're going to do everything in our power that you never see the light of day outside of a prison again. Do you understand that? I understand that. But I had nothing to do I with mean, you're not going to see Crystal unless you're talking to her through uh, plexiglass windows. You're not going to see Sylvia. You're not going to see... You've worked on your last car. You know, you, you've instantly become a billboard celebrity off Western Avenue. And uh, unless you start talking and tell us what 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 happens to Mr. Lonnie Franklin to to cause this to happen what what goes on in uh, I mean are you two different people or something I mean is yeah. there a, is there another little uh, side of Lonnie Franklin that we're unaware of that snaps in the middle of the night every couple of years he goes out and kills somebody I haven't killed anybody so I'm not even tripping on that one of these gals has uh, survived and she's going to have a she's going to have a grand time sitting in a courtroom looking looking down at a man that that uh, did her some her terrible that. terrible things years ago. You know these girls, they get 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 but we got one that can. Well, they talk. They talk through the evidence that points at you. Lonnie. Yes, sir. You're 50, what, you'll be 58 next month, right? Correct. You know, like I say, you're, you're not going to be getting out. I mean, now is the time to sit there so that at least us and the twilight of our careers can go back to these family members with an explanation. Don't you think they're owed that? Somebody Wouldn't you be owed that if someone was showing a picture of Crystal? Yes. That's what they deserve. You're done. <laughs> the life as Lonnie Franklin knew it is over. You've gone to your last pizza party uh, down at Buena Park. You've trolled Western Avenue for the last time. You've seen fireworks for the last time. Your lady friend at Buckingham and King, you've seen her for the last time. You think once you're locked up, they're really going to care where Lonnie is? They're going to move on with their lives, as well they should. They're going to be tainted as... Uh, being relatives of the, what, the grim sleeper. Their lives, your own family's lives, are going to be changed tremendously after today. I know you're a gentleman, and I can tell by talking to you to this morning and when we uh, met you out at the, the house earlier, and I know that you have a conscience, and you have a soul, and you inside have a problem. And that problem has caused all of these tragedies to happen. But along the way, you left your mark. And uh, I'm sure that wasn't by design that you left your mark. But like I said earlier, science in 2010 has caught up with something that you did in 1985, 1986, 1987, 1988. 2002, 2003, 2007, all of these years that have gone by finally has, 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 has probably a blessing to you. Science has finally stopped what Lonnie Franklin inside can't control. And, uh, and that's what brought us to today. And I know that you're an intelligent man, that you have a conscience, that you have a soul inside, and then I think you want to talk, tell us. Do you want to tell these family members of these young ladies that can't talk anymore that you're sorry and that you just don't, you, you don't know how, how this happened, but you, you I, I don't know. You've got you to open up and tell us. I mean, it's, uh, we don't have all of the answers yet, but we're working on it. So what's, what's the deal, Dublani? There's no deal. I mean, I, I don't know any of these people. I'm sorry. 
Uh, okay, well, I, okay, I'll give you that. Maybe you don't remember their faces. So if we if these were all of the same young black female face of your daughter, and every one of them has your DNA juice on their body that only belongs to you, how is it? How does that happen? How did that? I I, I, I agree. You probably don't know their names. You probably wouldn't remember them if they came up to you. Uh, uh, the next day after you had sex with them or whatever, and uh, <clears throat> but you, I mean, you picked up trash for a living in alleys. You didn't. You, but you're dumping them like they're like they are trash. You're disposing of these young ladies with uh, uh, in the alley or in the trash bin, and then you're piling stuff on top of them, and they're trash to you. And so it's just. I mean, how do you get there in your brain? How, how does that happen? It's just without something inside you that, that's causing you some, uh, some terrible, terrible uh, struggle going on inside the body that's of Lonnie Franklin that's leaving all this juice everywhere. I mean, this isn't something that your neighbor did or the, your son did or your, the, your uncle or brother-in-law. This is just something you did. Talk to us, Lonnie. I have nothing to say on I, I don't know none of these people. And, and you think that's just going to make it go away? No, I didn't say it was going to make it go away. I just have to get an attorney because I didn't know none of these people. So it's simple as that. I have to get an attorney. All right. It's all going through his head right now, man. He's just looking at his future, thinking of his past, and what has he done? Well, he guesses he wants an attorney now, so. Okay, okay Lonnie, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be arrested for murder. You have 10 counts of murder filed against you along with an attempt murder on a young lady that was survived. You're going to be taken down to the court. You'll be arraigned tomorrow. And then just stand by. When they book you this afternoon, there's a search warrant going on at your house right now. There's police, uh, people, a lot of different people searching your home right now. And it also added on the search warrant is uh, some things from your body. They're going to uh, take a, a little blood from you. They're going to take a swab from your mouth, and that's uh, uh, by order of the court. So as on the booking process, that's going to take place as well. Okay? So uh, that's all. We respect your request to have an attorney, and that's that. So... Any questions? No, no questions. All right. Okay, wait, we're not done yet. You told about the search warrant? I did. <laughs> okay. As part of that search warrant, uh, it was signed, we're going to collect some of your saliva. Okay. Mm -hmm. Blood, okay. Blood. Okay. Blood. okay, so we're bringing over the little swabs. We'll take care of that, and, uh, and then we'll have to take them over and, and uh, book. I'm going to uh, check on what the other thing going on. Okay, Are they going to take care of this? Yeah, let me talk to you outside.